Why have I not heard about this show before? Gotcha Crowds is this sort of weird, bizarre, utterly fascinating show that just... Honestly, I'm... Why have I not heard about this show? Okay, let me explain. I was going over this old flash drive that I found, and in it I found a text file said, you know, things to remember. And one of the biggest, most bold things on there is watch Gotchaman crowds. Just that, no context. So I went, okay, let's see if this thing can be found. And sure enough, I found it on both Crunchyroll and Funimation. Well, no, I found it on VRV. I'm just assuming it's on both of them. But anyways, I decided, you know what? This was the biggest, boldest thing on this list. So I decided, let's watch it. And this show... Holy shit, this show is just... Oh, I fucking love Gotchaman Crowds. Okay, alright. Let me just let me just collect myself for a bit and explain why I love this fucking show. First of all, it starts off like your traditional Super Sentai show. We have a character, he does a cool pose, says a titular, you know, catchphrase. In this case, it's Go Bird. And he transforms into a Gotchaman, which are basically magical robot person. And he destroys this cuboid figure, which we are then told is referred to as Mess. And the show gets started. So it sets itself up as a traditional Super Sentai show, but it rapidly becomes... It doesn't stop being a Super Sentai show, but it shifts its focus from action, as most of these shows do, and more on the world and characters. It does that whole... It sets you up for one genre, but then it switches gears to another, and I just love that shit, you know? You know, one of my favorite animes of all time, Madoka Magica, is like that to a T. And before it completely and utterly shit itself entirely, Cato the Right Answer was also, you know, something very good that I very much liked. But anyways, this show... It... Uh, okay... It stars this girl named Hajime, who has a fetish for notebooks and is a very, you know, bizarre outlook. And one day she gets approached by this alien known as JJ and gets chosen to become a gotcha man, a protector of the planet. In this, we learn just how different she is when she, how she deals with mess. So there is this cuboid figure that, you know, has been abducting people. And she, you know, begins fighting it, but she sees something a bit odd in how it reacts to her and decides, you know what, maybe there's something else going on. And basically somehow manages to communicate with it through, you know, movement and just, you know, body language and gets it to, you know, release all the people. And then it turns out that this is not, in fact, some benevolent alien that's abducting people for basically no reason. This thing, it's basically like it didn't understand it was harming people, and now that Hajime has somehow managed to convey that it was harming people, it no longer is doing so. And it's like, this, like in a Super Sentai show, the format is basically always beat the monster till it stops doing the bad thing, and then wait until next week when a new monster comes that we can beat up so it can stop doing the bad thing. And it's like, okay, this is different. And it's just, the way these characters bounce off of one another are great. And all just seeing how Hajime sees the world, because at first glance she is this really naive, optimistic to a fault girl, but at the same time she sees the world in such a way that she wants to understand why other people are doing things, and she wants to think the best of them. And through this, she solves a lot of problems. And on, uh, just... I just really like her as a character. There's just something about this like utterly bizarre thought process that makes her such a fascinating person to like watch. And just she is just such a legitimately good human being that even someone like me who considers themselves an eternal pessimist can't help but be like, oh, oh, you are just adorable. You are the greatest. But that's not to say the other characters aren't, you know... The other characters, the side characters aren't, they all have their own focus. They're all fascinating in their own right. The first character we meet, the first gotcha man we see in action, is this character named 
Sujin, Sujan, Su, I don't speak Japanese, I don't know how to fucking pronounce their names, but yeah, he's this sort of straight and narrow, typical, you know, Super Sentai protagonist, she, he likes to follow, you know, these, his commands to the letter, he likes to be the model, you know, he likes to obey without question, he thinks the best thing to do is just when he is told to do something, he will do it to the best of his ability, down to the spirit and the letter of the command. And seeing him bounce off of Hajime is fascinating, because at first he's like, this girl is naive, she's a newbie, she doesn't know what the hell she's doing. But as they interact, she sees that no, in fact she does know what she's doing, it's just that she almost, she subscribes almost to an entirely different code of conduct than anyone else around her and she kind of warps their you know perspective to hers just through being so optimistic so cheerful and just so happy and just oh i want to snuggle up with this girl and she's just great she is fantastic she is this innocent cinnamon bun and uh but we also have you know there's you know a couple of other characters on the gotchaman team we have joe san who is this like He's a civil worker by day, but then he becomes this, like, smoking playboy at night. Like, he has this image. And, like, I really love him because he's, like, he looks like he would be your typical delinquent. But he has this catchphrase where it's, like, no, my dream hasn't changed all, you know, my dream hasn't changed at all. I want one thing and I work towards one thing. And then he, like, throws a dart into a board and he's smoking a cigarette and he goes, world and it's like oh like, jesus christ like just his image and his words are like great and he, uh i just love the way he looks i just i really love cool badass characters and then we're introduced to um utsara utsuru i'm sorry i can't pronounce your fucking name but she's just this cute little girl and she's like she's really depressed like she says i'm gloomy all the time but like when, you know, she interacts with Hajime, Hajime eventually gets her to, like, look up at life. To, like, she makes her want to help people. And it's, like, she has the power to heal people at a touch. But the problem is that she shortens her own life doing so. Or, as is shown multiple times, she can shorten other people's lives in order to heal others. And it's, like, she's this, like, really tragic, you know, kind of character. Because it's, like, okay, she can use her powers for good... But in order to do so, she actually has to actively harm herself or harm another human being. And it's like, just seeing her turn from this like incredibly depressed person to someone who goes, you know what, I'm willing to take that price. I'm willing to harm myself or accept other individuals who are okay with them harming themselves to heal others, that she becomes, you know, much more happier as a result. And it's... Oh, it's great. And there's this other character named OD, and this is one thing I love about this show, but there are a couple of really fucking weird characters. Like, OD is like this just camp gay guy. He's just on the Gotchman team, and he's very obviously gay. And he's just that. He's just a regular gay guy who, you know, if he transforms into a Gotchman, has the potential to destroy the entire world. But... It's never really, it's not made a big deal out of. It's like, oh, we have this gay character, he's gay, that's nice, that's awesome. Nobody brings attention to it. That's one of the things that, like, just blew my mind. It's like, we have this very obviously gay character here, and usually in this kind of show, you usually have, like, one episode where it's like, ew, gay people, and then it's like, oh no, gay people are great. But, aside from the main antagonist of the first season... It's never really brought up or brought to attention. It's like, he's a gay guy. That's okay. That's cool. It doesn't matter. And I just... Oh, it's just something about that. Just like, you don't really see that. And then we come to another character who is not a gotchaman, but he is this character named Ryu. And Ryu is the creator of this social media platform known as... Uh, Galax. I believe this is a reference to the 70s anime that had the same name of Gotchaman, but I'm not sure. But Galax is this social media platform that works... Basically, it's run by this AI, and you can go, Hey, 
you know, I'm having, you know, a stomach ache, or I, f like, I'm having, you know, some financial troubles, or something like that, and then it'll be like, okay, let me match you to another person, and it'll be, you know, reach out to someone who's a financial advisor, or someone who has, you know, medical training, and be like, so-and-so person has a problem that you can help out with your, you know, criteria, do you want to help them out, and they're like, yes, and it's like, okay, here's the person, go to them, and help them out, and it's like, Okay, that's a fascinating idea for a social media platform, and it's run by this character known as Ryu, who wants to update the world. He believes that by, you know, bringing together, you know, people, by showing them how good it feels to help another person out of the goodness of your heart, you can eventually create this sort of utopia, and that's what his belief is. He, you know, doesn't like the idea of heroes. He doesn't believe we need a couple of people who are super-powered, in order to, you know, show the world where it can go. He believes that the common masses can, you know, evolve into a force for good. And this makes him a kind of fascinating character because he also has his own abilities. He was given by a separate alien, the antagonist, and um, this ability known as crowds, where he can, you know, manifest this sort of bulbous pixelated figure and use it to achieve superhuman feats and he she can also he it's a he by the way he can also grant this power to other individuals which he has what he calls the hundred which he can use he can basically allow them to manifest these figures as well and they use this in scenarios where just regular human beings can't you know, hope to figure things out. And this creates a conflict in the character because this character is someone who believes that if we, if all of humanity unites together, there is nothing they cannot do. The, you know, these supernatural figures are not necessary to existence, yet he has a power that allows him to basically create superheroes. So it's like this inner conflict that makes this character fascinating and it's just like, uh, the sort of, like, his thought process and what he does is, like, just, it's a big conflict in the story. And it's just so interesting to see how this person both justifies not using crowds, but also how torn they are whenever they have to use them. Because even though they're saving lives, they are still betraying their own thought that heroes are not necessary, that all humanity needs is to be united together. Also, he's a cross-dresser. It's just, it's, it's this sort of like thing, like he just cross-dresses. It is a guy, a very effeminate looking guy who, you know, usually goes around looking like a girl. And it's like, it's just never really brought up. It's like, He's just a cross-dresser and nobody gives a shit. Like, besides, you know, the antagonist, who is this, like, basically a living internet troll, nobody really brings it up. Like, there are a couple of, like, you see a couple of cutaways to, like, online comments who are like, oh, it's this gross cross-dresser. But it's like, yeah, you're gonna have those, but it's not really, it's not, it's more side padding. Like, just like with OD, the gay gotcha man, it's like, this character is odd and strange and doesn't fit to societal norms and that's all right that's okay this person is just doing their own thing they're not harming anyone else and you know what good for them that does not affect you therefore they don't care and it's just there's just something about like these characters just represented as people and there's not any big episode that goes hey look these people are weird and some people won't accept it, but that's okay. There is no episode like that because the show doesn't think it needs to make an episode like that. And it's just, that's just a fascinating thing that I loved. And then we come to the final character I wanted to talk about. And it is this character known as Berg Katz. And Katz is, Katz is the fucking shit. It's, it's an alien that gave Ryu her power, his powers. I keep on calling her her because like she cross dresses. He... He is a cross-dresser, and he dresses as a girl, and just for some reason, my brain, despite the fact that I love his character, it's like my brain goes, it's a girl, it's a girl. No, it fucking isn't, it's a guy. 
But yeah, Katz is this red-skinned alien who is just... He's basically chaotic evil. He is an internet troll given superpowers, and he just loves to commit crimes. And it's like, oh, oh, I fucking love this character. First of all, there's just about, just something about chaotic evil characters when done well. Like, say, the Joker, especially the, you know, Batman Begins, Dark Knight, you know, Christian Bale shit. There's just something about when they're done well that are fucking phenomenal there's just characters who are evil because they fucking love being evil are just so utterly fascinating and so fun to watch and this one is great is it's honestly it's basically what i said earlier an internet troll brought to life and he it's like there's no real reason for why it's doing what it's doing it just wants to watch the world burn and it wants to you know do you know just, ah, uh, I love this character. First of all, the way they sound. Just listen to the way they talk, and it's... Oh my god, it's just... Oh, I love this character. They do not give a shit, and they are more than happy to let the world know that they don't give a shit. But yeah, bird cats, and it's like... One thing I really love is the interaction between cats and Hajime. Because Hajime in her own way does not give a shit about the rest of the world. She's gonna do her own thing and go along like how she thinks she should and just seeing them is great because even though they're like on opposite sides of the spectrum, Katz being someone who is a malicious and is sadistic and loves to cause misery for misery's sake, and Hajime who loves to help people because helping people is awesome, it's like they're on opposite ends of the spectrum and they should hate each other, but they have this almost friendly vibe to them they're almost like they're almost buddies in a way like Hajime is like they're like how can we stop cats and Hajime is like oh I don't think we're gonna convince him to stop he's having fun he doesn't give a shit and then she and then cats is like oh Hajime are you having fun and Hajime is like yeah I'm having fun right now and it's like oh that's great that's fine, I'm gonna destroy the world, and Hajime is like, okay, we're gonna stop you, but it's good that you're having fun, and it's like, this conversation and these interactions are weird as shit, but they're fucking fun as hell at the same time, and it's just, I love this show, and just the character interactions and the world they've been around, built around it is fucking great. Alright, so yeah, the story is great, but what about the visuals? Because anime is, of course, animation, and animation is a visual medium. And you know what? The animation is... You know, I, I, I actually like it. The character designs are all... You know, they all pop. All of these characters have, you know, personality built into them from the second you see them. And just the ways they animate is present, pleasant to look at. You know, Hajime's, you know, default expression is something that I fucking love. I don't know why, but I love her expression. And just the way they move and the way they, you know, interact just looks great. As for the fight scenes themselves, they're very much not a focus of this show. Like, you can tell, like, there's no real, unlike most Super Sentai show, there's no real, like, look, transformation sequence. Like, there's no long drawn out, like, let's drop all of the budget on this transformation sequence. They just kind of turn from their 2D characters into these 3D gotcha men. And... It does look a bit glaring at first glance, but you get used to it very quickly. The Gotchman, they're animated well enough that it's like, okay, this isn't like Berserk 2016 or some shit, or like Fate Stay Nights, you know, CGI Dragon, you know what I'm talking about. But at the same time, you know, it's very obvious that action is not the primary focus of this show. But yeah, it just, it looks pleasant enough. It looks, you know... It looks good, but I do have to give props for any time that Katz is on the scene. Katz just, oh, I love this character. But anyways, that's less because she's animated well and more because she's just this, like, weird fucking internet troll given life that's just great. So then, Gotchman Crowds is a phenomenal anime that you should watch. It's just, I just... What this anime I didn't hear about. I didn't know its existence. At one point I knew its existence considering the fact of that, you know, text file I found which just said go watch this thing. But it's like 
where did this go? Like, who made this? When did it get made? Like, I knew nothing about this going in, and now it's, like, my one of my favorite things of this year so far. Despite the fact that it apparently aired in 2013. Well, while it, wouldn't, while it wasn't, you know, very popular here in the States, it turns out that it was popular enough to get a second season, known as Gotchaman Insight. And this second season, having watched it, was... It was okay. It was fine. Alrighty. So, Gotchaman Crowd's Insight is a thing that exists, and... I'm not sure whether or not that's really a good thing. That's not to say it's a terrible, it's completely serviceable, but I feel like a lot of what made Gotchaman crowds fantastic is lost in the second season. First thing that is very much different is it's much more action-packed. There are more fights. Instead of being only a couple throughout the whole season, there is every episode or two there is some sort of fight and they are well animated they are entertaining but i feel that gatchaman crowds was never about the action so it feels almost like filler when compared to the first episode the second is the conflict of insight in crowds the conflict was a very human conflict it was about this idea between there being a few people with power and thus guiding everyone else, and everyone having power and being equal, but whether that was a good thing or a bad thing, because, you know, if you give power to a large group of people, are they going to use it for good, or are they going to use it for evil? And it was that idea that, you know, that ended up having this idea that, yes, there are, it is a good thing to have a few people who have exceptional power, but at the same time, it is better for them to lead by example and, you know, be an image for other people who can gain power to, you know, also help out the world. Whereas in Gotchaman Insight, it's almost... The story feels a bit more muddled, because it's like, okay, everyone has the ability of crowds now, these pixelated figures. But then this second group of crowds comes out, and it's like, these people think that, you know, human beings shouldn't have this power because it'll lead to them doing violent things. And they're going to show the world that by doing violent crimes themselves, and it's like, fucking what? But yeah, this is, you know, this is the first, you know, sort of arc of this season, but then it is dropped to the wayside when the leader is found and is sort of you know, arrested, but at the same time, kind of wins, because everyone is like, yeah, crowds are dangerous, we shouldn't have this ability. And then comes in the new characters. There are two new main characters to the Insight season. The first is Subasa, who is, she's basically Hajime Light. She has, you know, this whole idea that she wants to be a hero, she's optimistic, and she's sort of naive, but Unlike Hajime, who just seems sort of naive, but actually has this sort of, you know, rock-solid internal logic, which she sees the world and she applies to the world, that makes her seem almost wise in some senses, Tsubasa is just straight-up knave. She's just the typical, oh, I'm gonna believe good things about all people, except when I don't, and I'm gonna make a bunch of mistakes that seem like, that are just mistakes. And it's, she... Uh, she's Hajime Light in the worst possible way, and her character, I feel, is just very weak. Like, she could not be there, and I think the show would be better for it. And then there's Gelsandra. Gelsandra is an alien who comes from outer space. And, you know, this isn't surprising, because, you know, there are a couple of characters who are literal aliens in this show. But Gelsandra is weird, is sort of, I don't, there's something about her character that just doesn't gel well with me. Like, the only two characters who are, well, the only three characters who are blatantly aliens are Pai Pai, who is basically the mascot character. There's JJ, who, aside from, you know, granting the Gashaman powers and from occasionally giving them a sort of 
prophecy telling them where the danger is isn't really there, per se. There's also Cats, but Cats is very interesting because she's more a force of nature than anything else. She's, in, she's this sort of chaotic evil character who just does things and does it because they love evil. But Gelsandra, on the other hand, is sort of, she's kind of seen as a sort of foil. She wants to do good. She wants to unite humanity. But at the same time, she, like, she seems very naive, but it's like, there's this, I, like, it's said in the show itself that it's like, yeah, this character has united countless planets. In fact, Cats once went up against Gelsandra and lost. And it's like, okay. But she, she's a sort of character and like she has this ability where she can like basically manifest people's emotions and thoughts as like this thought bubble looking thing and she can then consume them and it'll tell her what everyone is thinking. But at the same time, while she has this ability, she, you know, she uses this ability to get elected as prime minister, which fucking what? And second of all, it's like, she can read people's minds, and I feel like this is something that isn't, like, brought up very well. Like, in the first season, you know, Hajime just straight up reveals that she's a gotcha man in front of a bunch of cameras, and like, yeah, gotcha men exist, I'm a gotcha man. And it's like, this becomes this media storm, which is like, holy shit, gotcha men exist, you know, there are like, pop, like, paparazzi come out of nowhere and like hey what's our gotcha man being like what do you do how did you get this power and they're like doing all that but like this alien goes around and basically says on national tv yeah i can read minds i know what you're all thinking elect me for prime minister and i will solve all your problems and it's like wait 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 you can read minds fucking what like i feel like like in a realistic like there's just something about that idea which is like Okay, this alien has appeared in Japan, it can read minds, and it wants to unify the world. I feel like every other government would be like, fuck no, nuke Japan into nothingness, fuck that thing. We don't want it, because like, I just, I can't see the rest of the world going, oh, alien that can read minds and has superpowers. There is no way in hell we're gonna let this thing have some sort of government position. And it's just, ugh. So yeah, Gotcha Man Insights, there's just something about it that it's like, it's okay. I feel like it would be good in a vacuum, but since it's a sequel to Gotcha Man Crowds, which was just such a good anime that I fucking loved, that it just feels like a step down and like a step away. It feels like it concentrates more on action and fighting than the first one, and it suffers for it. Anyways, that's been my little opinions and thoughts on Gotchaman Crowds, and to a lesser extent, its sequel, Gotchaman Crowds Insight. So, yeah, just go watch Gotchaman Crowds if you want to see something character-focused and just with a fascinating little world, and Gotchaman Crowds and Insight is an okay follow-up, but at the... it... Huh. Watch the first couple episodes, and if, you know, it, you don't like it, then just drop it. Gotchaman Crowds, it, you know, Gotchaman Crowds can exist by itself in a vacuum, and I think is better for it. So, yeah, that's my opinions on that. If you like this video, of course, like it. If you disliked it, there's a button for that, too. Comment, subscribe, ring that bell to ensure you can see my videos. And, you know, there are links in the description to all of my social media places... And, um, yeah, I'm gonna stop supporting my second channels because, like, I've started getting, you know, some work. I've started putting me more out. They've started giving me more work, so hopefully I'll go from part-time to full-time again. So I'm not gonna have that much time, so I've decided to drop my Let's Play channel. But, yeah, you know, do all that. And comment down below. You can support me on Patreon. Also, feel free to comment either you know, down below or on my Patreon page on what videos you want to see me do next. I'm going to be doing a anime video, then a video game video, then an anime video, you know, switching back and forth, maybe the occasional movie or like TV show if I see something that's, 
you know, really, I really, really like. But if you got a recommendation, be sure to leave it down below, and I'll put it on a list, and hopefully I'll see it. Just so y'all know, I own a PS4. I own a... Okay, PC. It should be able to play most games. And I own a Nintendo Switch. So, those are the things I can make videos on. Keep that in mind if you're going to recommend something. Alrighty, that's been Juan John John with my thoughts on Gotchman Crowds and its, to a lesser extent, sequel, Gotchman Crowds and Insight. I shall see you all later. Goodbye.